Hello everyone and welcome to the Starseed Dragon channel. This is our new perspective for the day. I hope you're ready to exercise those intuitive muscles. Um, we are using the Tattoo Tarot and uh, we got the Ten of Swords, Temperance, Eight of Cups, the Hierophant, Knight of Coins, and the Queen of Cups. Um, so the suit of swords, uh, we all know by now, is air element, which rules over the mind. Uh, the number 10 uh, speaks to completions, instant manifestations, um, the ending, right? Um, it's the end of the minor arcana. So um, that would be like... You know, knowing that the Ten of Swords is the end of a difficult time, maybe a difficult time that of being mentally manipulated by others or something that was mentally anguishing for, for you, right? Um, temperance, the Hierophant, those are major arcanas. And major arcanas speak to um, major events and situations in our lives that will not go unnoticed. So temperance speaks to um, balance and alchemy, right? Trying to um, take all of the elements and uh, use them in a balanced manner to manifest something beautiful, right? and good. Um, it takes a great deal of patience to do that. And it, it speaks highly of, you know, alchemy. You have to really figure these things out. She's experimenting on, you know, how she can balance out these two, um, these two things. But in all actuality, she's using all of the elements, right? Um, and the Hierophant is about authority, tradition, uh, 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 not just religious figures. Um, it used to be called the Pope, uh, but um, it speaks to uh, someone who is um, an authority in education, a teacher, a wise one, right? Um, some decks call it the shaman, right? And that's appropriate because they are teachers and guides and they are keepers of the knowledge and traditions, right? Um, the suit of cups, we have two cups here. We have the eight of cups and the queen of cups. So cups is water elements. It speaks to emotions and feelings, intuition, um, gentleness, guide, guidance. It also speaks to the ne negative aspects of emotions too, right? It's everything emotional based coming from the heart you know coming from the depths of your soul right um that feeling and the number eight um is about power about owning your power it the number eight is the ceo of uh the numbers in numerology right so it's it's about power and authority which i think is relevant right because we have this major arcana, the Hierophant, who is um, an authority fig figure and a teacher, right? And the keeper of knowledge and tradition, right? So the Eight of Cups traditionally speaks to walking away from that which no longer serves you, being knowledgeable enough to realize that the situation or the people or uh, the what have yous um, in your life are <clears throat> that you thought were good for you at one point in time are no longer serving the purpose of uh, your highest good of finding your happiness and your purpose, right? So um, that's what the Eight of Cups speaks about. And the Queen of Cups speaks to um, the energy of... Um, uh, She's the nurturing mother, right? The nurturing, caring mother that, you know, uh, is full of kindness and adoration 
and uh, she's a very loving and doting mother, right? Um, the court cards uh, usually speak, you know, traditionally speak about um, or reference rather a person. But um, I urge you to to think much more broad than that um, and think about the energies that um, and the monikers that are given to each of the, the different court cards because they represent more than just people. And yeah, they could be people in one's life coming in or out or um, continuing to exist or whatever the case may be. Or it could be speaking to a characteristic, right, of what an individual um, might encounter in another individual or in themselves, for that matter. But the energy of uh, the Queen of Cups um, is a nurturing mother, a nurturing individual that is... Uh, um, very emotionally stable and yet you know on the negative aspect uh, depending on how it sits you know you don't have to read uprights and reversals I mean you can if you want to I don't I prefer to look at my cards upright but I also and you know have grown up understanding that there's a positive and a negative aspect to each card and to really everything right so when I read personally, I think of the positive and the negative aspects. Um, and I look at, I lean one way or another uh, towards those things, depending on what cards are attached to it, right? So um, that, that I think is good advice. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below if you don't, if you don't agree. Um, and... I'd love to know your perspective of it. But I, I never uh, read reversals because, you know, I, I see the positive and the negative um, aspects of each card um, with them being upright. <laughs> There's no need for me to, to see them in reverse mode because, you know, um, that's just... It, it's When people read reversals, it's just... just it tells me that they're only seeing the negative aspects instead of seeing both sides of the coin um, in order to gain a, a you know, more defined picture of what it is that um, our intuition and our intuitive nudges are trying to speak to us, right? Through these, through these cards and how they're laid and what they're attached to and how they all connect with one another. Because when you lay down a set of cards, whether it's three cards, six, 10, 12, nine, what, however many cards, they, they need to connect in some form, right? And it's, it's a puzzle. So um, uh, however they connect with one another would define which way you would lean, whether it be positive or negative, towards that end story, right? And then we have the Knight of Coins. The suit of coins or pentacles is um, earth element. So it has everything to do with the material realm. It's a very slow moving energy. It takes its time. Um, it's uh, everything in our material world that we encounter. Um, health, wealth, love, um, abundance, However, it is that you as an individual would see abundance, right? We all um, have our own perspective on what abundance means to us. And uh, the Knight of Coins, uh, again, a court card. Uh, he, he's a very slow moving, methodical energy. He thinks things through. And it's one of those uh, energies of that tells me personally um, to take your time. There is an offering. Knights are about offering something. Uh, and they are, they are messengers. They are bringing the message of an offer of something. Uh, the fact that this knight is 
the Knight of Coins, which is Earth Element, means that there's some sort of material offering um, slowly approaching. And um, he's taking his time and uh, thinking methodically on how to approach that, right? So how are these cards connecting for you? Uh, what card um, did your intuition spur you to see first? That's where your story starts. Let me know in the comment section below um, where your intuition guided you um, with the connection of these six cards. I'd love to hear your perspective. And so we got uh, some oracles. We have some, uh, what is this? The Sea Soul Journeys. These are pretty cards. Uh, depth, may you immerse and go deeper. I should probably put on my, my, reading, uh, my reading glasses. And then we got um, space. May your heart and your scope expand. Interesting how these connect with one another, isn't it? And then we got some Andromeda Skies uh, Love Oracles. I These are two different decks, but I, I merged them into one. So we got a Silent Heart and a Love Oracle. But again, I merged, I merged these two decks into one deck. Because <laughs> that's how I roll, apparently. So it says, I abandon people to make myself feel important. I can see that, right? I can see that connection. Um, I wish I could turn back the clock and do things over. I can see that as well. I can see that connection. For me, the I abandon people and make myself feel important, it connects to, for me, it connects to that, um, <clears throat> that Queen of Cups. Remember how I was saying that it could be negative depending on what's attached to it. Um, that Queen of Cups and that Temperance connected with the Ten of Swords and the Eight of Cups makes me feel like in, in this particular setup that someone is finding, um, receiving the knowledge that they need or acknowledging the knowledge that, that uh, they needed to receive in order to realize that there may be a feminine energy around them that is uh, very manipulative and um, uh, maybe even narcissistic that they need to walk away from in order to achieve um, the things that they want in this world um, and in order to uh, find their own happiness because they're not, they're not finding happiness with this feminine energy, right? And it could be a male or a female, that Queen of Cups. But it is definitely feminine energy, right? Because that, that's what that card represents. So um, instead of being a nurturing, loving um, energy, it is the negative aspect of the Queen of Cups, which is um, manipulative and uh, demonstrative, right? She's... Um, she throws temper tantrums and is not thoughtful of others' feelings and uh, so forth. And it looks like that there's, with that Ten of Swords, there's an end to that. Someone is putting an end to that and walking away from that situation no matter how much they love that person. Uh, because they're realizing that it, it was just manipulation and not actual love, right? What is it that you see and what, what is your perspective on the connection with these cards? Let me know in the comment section below. And I hope you have a great day. And I will see you on the next video.